So let us talk about licensing. Even though I really don't want to talk about licensing. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. I don't even want to talk about this. Um, even when I was talking about licensing in the common design patterns, I was trying not to uh, really dive deep into it. But the reality is there's no escaping the licensing conversation, especially when you're dealing with enterprise software like SQL Server. However, there's no denying the fact that licensing has a direct impact in your architecture, your design, even in how you would scale up like adding more CPU cores or scale out, like adding more replicas, there's no denying the fact that it has a direct impact. And that's why I've included this section. In fact, I didn't really plan on having this section until I realized, hey, that might be beneficial. Um, also, I plan to add more into this section in the future in case Microsoft decides again to make changes to their licensing agreement. Um, I also want you to uh, refer to the blog post that a good friend of mine wrote when he was still with Microsoft. He's left last year. Maybe he just got confused with all the licensing changes. I don't know. Um, refer to that. Also, uh, refer to the SQL Server 2019 licensing guide um, to give you an idea of what is covered. But I'm summing it up and Mike, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible so that you can understand what is covered and what isn't covered. Also, here's the thing that I, I realized. Um, sometimes uh, tech professionals, DBAs, sysadmins, or whoever's responsible for taking care of the SQL Server instance are not even aware of what they can do based on what is covered by their software assurance or by their licenses, whether you have software assurance or not. In fact, uh, I had a client a couple of years ago where they realized they could save on licensing based on what they had. They bought, I think, about four licenses, not realizing that they have software assurance, which means they are covered based on what was uh, provisioned in their licensing agreement back when they, uh, when they bought their software assurance. And so again, it helps that you have this conversation who, uh, with whoever's responsible for licensing, ask questions, and uh, re refer back to your Microsoft uh, licensing expert, your Microsoft contact, or your Microsoft representative to understand really what is covered and what is not. So I want to talk about this, but just because it says SQL Server 2019 does not mean that you can only do this with SQL Server 2019 onwards. It only means that it was introduced with SQL Server 2019. Um, if you have supported versions, and I mean supported, we're not talking about SQL Server 2008 here. If you, and of course, SQL Server 2012 and 2014 are nearing their extended support life cycle, so uh, you might have to think about how you want to deal with that. So, like I said, even though uh, these were introduced in SQL Server 2019, these apply to any version of SQL Server that is still supported as of date, All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same common design patterns that I've talked about in the previous lessons and use the new licensing agreement. Now, this is really all about the software assurance. So you may or may not have software assurance at the moment. Um, again, it would help if you ask. Some people realize, oh, they have software assurance, not realizing that they can do something uh, because they have software assurance. Some realize that they don't have software assurance and therefore they're limited by what they can do. Okay, So this encompasses what you can do with software assurance, which also makes you think about, hey, do I convince my, uh, my manager to get software assurance for SQL Server in Windows or anything that um, always on availability group covers. You might want to think about that. So let's have a look at this and understand that in more detail. So let's look at this design pattern when you have like two replicas. Uh, both of the replicas are standalone instances and you only um, want to accomplish high availability. As far as the previous licensing agreement and software assurance benefits are concerned, there really isn't much of a big deal here. 
it's exactly the same. You only need one license to cover the primary replica plus software assurance to cover the secondary replica. Moving on. Let's look at, have a look at this one where you have like a three replica availability group, of course, running on a three node failover cluster, where you have uh, standalone instances that covers both high availability and disaster recovery. Now recall back in the previous um, uh, lesson on the common design pattern with this specific uh, uh, design architecture. In the previous uh, software assurance benefits, you need two licenses for this. One license covers the primary replica, your software assurance covers the secondary replica, but because you're only covered with uh, you know, your extra replica is only covered by software assurance, the other replica in the DR data center is you know, not covered, therefore you need to buy a license for that. Now, let's put in some numbers here, right? So let's say your, your primary replica has you know, four uh, CPU cores. I'm, I'm just simplifying things here. Four CPU cores and uh, Enterprise Edition license is $10,000 per CPU core. Of course, it's cheaper than that, but I just want to make my math easy. If you want this architecture to be covered, you are, uh, you are going to spend $40,000 for the primary replica plus software assurance plus an additional $40,000 to cover that replica on the DR data center. That was in the past. With today's software assurance, this only requires one SQL Server license and software assurance. Now, when you start to think about that, I'm like, wow, that's half of it. Because prior to this uh, new software assurance benefit, you're paying twice as much when you don't even use the secondary replica for anything other than DR. Here, Microsoft is giving you um, the uh, usage rights to run a secondary replica in DR with the new software assurance benefits. Pretty cool, huh? Let's have a look at this one. When you start to think about it, this is no different from the previous design pattern where you have three operating system environments. It just so happened that the first replica here is on an FCI while the other one is a standalone instance. You're still covered by uh, high availability, but with the disaster recovery for uh, that secondary replica. So when you start to look at the um, uh, a licensing guide and the pattern for this, it's similar to the previous one. So you only need like one license plus SA for this. No big deal, right? It becomes even more uh, exciting, or I don't want to say exciting, but it, it becomes even more interesting when you look at something like this. In fact, this is the very architecture described in a blog post that I referenced in the additional resources section. Four replicas running on a four node Windows Server fail of a cluster. All of the replicas are standalone instances. You have one replica for HA which is a synchronous secondary replica, one replica for DR, and of course that has got to be asynchronous, and another secondary replica on another data center. Maybe you have a, um, a, a compliance requirement for that. In the past, you would need two licenses for this plus software assurance just to be covered. Just to be covered. Here with the new software assurance benefits, you only need one license. And like I said, refer back to the um, blog post that I mentioned because this is exactly the architecture that they talked about. The biggest distinction here, really, has something to do with running that secondary uh, replica on a Microsoft Azure. The way I look at, th at this, this is Microsoft's way of, I don't want to say forcing, but convincing people to start putting stuff on Microsoft Azure because well if you're if you, one of your replicas is already there you already have a resource on Microsoft Azure it makes it a lot easy to transition to the cloud right again in the past if you decide to have a replica on Azure you would have to pay for it separately um, or you you do, do what they call a bring your own uh, license 
which of course does not really cover much in a, you know an architecture like this. Again, the key distinction here is running Microsoft Azure. Four replicas, uh, one replica for HA, which is synchronous secondary, another replica for DR, which is asynchronous secondary, and another replica for another DR, but it has to be running on Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure. Not AWS, not GCP, not Rackspace, not a colo facility, Microsoft Azure. Right? The first three replicas for your production in DR, do whatever you want with it. But that secondary replica for DR has to be on Azure in order for you to be covered with the new software assurance benefits. Let's have a look at this one. This is similar to the uh, previous design pattern in that you have a four node failure of a cluster, but you only have like three replicas here. But going back to uh, what I mentioned, you're looking at operating system environments, not SQL Server instances. So here you have four operating system environments, which means you need four licenses. In the past, you would need two SQL Server licenses here plus software assurance. Now in this case, you only need one. Again, assuming that that third replica, the secondary replica is running on Microsoft Azure. Hint, hint. Again, the same as uh, the previous design pattern. What about this one? Now, you might be thinking, isn't this the same as the you know, previous design pattern where you have like four replicas running on a four node? And uh, no, it's not. Really not. Why? Because that additional data center is not on Microsoft Azure. So in this case, you will have to pay for, wait for it, two licenses. Just because you don't have that fourth replica on Azure, you're going to have to pay two SQL Server licenses plus software assurance. Think about that for a second. This one, again, similar to the previous one, except that you have like three replicas instead of four. But because that additional data center is not on Azure, you're paying for two SQL Server licenses plus SA. I mean, even this one where you have your, uh, your replicas as failover clustered instances, the fact that you do not have a fourth operating system environment on Microsoft Azure, you will have to pay for license. Which is why, again, uh, this is one of those uh, architectures where you really have to uh, evaluate the need for this. Otherwise, keep it as simple as possible. Now, in the past, what I tell my customers is don't do anything on your secondary replicas unless you want to pay for it. And what I mean by that is because you read a ton of documentation from Microsoft, Microsoft Certified Masters, Microsoft MVPs, subject matter experts talking about, yeah, you run your DBCC check DB on your secondary replica. I'm like, no. There's a technical reason why Microsoft wants you to do it because each replica has its independent storage subsystem, which means you need to get uh, get your uh, your databases uh, checked when it comes to storage uh, consistency. But my take on it is that they're not paying for license. Your company is. And that's why they're recommending it. I'm like, I tell my customers, don't ever run anything on your secondary replicas unless you're already paying for a full-blown license. Not, a, not software assurance, but full-blown license. Um, in fact, one of the strategies uh, that I recommend, and I'm going to talk about this in more detail in the administration uh, section of this class. In the past, my recommendation is if you want to run CheckDB on the other secondary replicas, then fail over to that secondary replica and then run CheckDB off of that. It gives you um, the flexibility of being able to do your administrative tasks and checking like consistency checks without paying for additional license. Now that recommendation is out the window because of this, right? Um, with the new software assurance benefits, you can now run stuff like CheckDB, run full and log backups on your secondary replicas. Again, these are the only ones covered because the minute that you start using your secondary replicas for stuff like reporting, you want to run uh, your uh, reports and analytics off of your second, you have to pay for full blown license for that. They're not covered by software assurance, right? So stuff like CheckDB, full database, and log backups, and, and collecting information against 
usage metrics. Those are the ones that count towards using the secondary replica for without having to pay for a full-blown license. And this is again something that you have to uh, consider when you start offloading backups to your secondary replicas. Now you can, right? Um, again, go back to the uh, blog post that I uh, um, referred to in the additional resources section just gives you uh, an idea of what is covered in your licenses, um, if you have software assurance or not. Knowing how to talk to the right people, knowing how to negotiate with your Microsoft representative, your reseller, and uh, your Microsoft uh, licensing expert can really help you a lot with this. Uh, I remember uh, I had a client back in 2018 uh, they're a software as a service company and they bought their SQL Server licenses in you know, for SQL Server 2012 and they got grandfathered into the old licensing model because back then it was on a per socket basis. So they were able to leverage the per socket licensing to move to SQL Server 2012. But as, it, as they were moving on, uh, into SQL Server 2018 or 17 at that point. As they were moving into SQL Server 2017, they realized, oh, wait a second, with the new licensing model, it's going to be more expensive because they're looking at those very expensive uh, Dell servers with multi core uh, CPUs. And, you know, moving from 2012 to 2017 is a huge leap as far as licensing is concerned. They weren't able to use uh, the licenses because they you know, it took them a while to get the project going. But now that they're, uh, they were revisiting the project, they were like, how do we do this? And I told them, talk to your Microsoft uh, licensing expert, talk to your Microsoft representative. And, you know, there's nothing that you cannot negotiate. And so they talked to the Microsoft representative. And at the end of the conversation, they were, uh, surprisingly, they were grandfathered into this old licensing model of the per socket uh, uh, licensing, which means they were able to buy like uh, four CPU hexa core, so that's uh, geez, 24 cores, see my, my, my mind is, 24 cores at the same price as what they paid for back in SQL Server 2008. So again, there's nothing that you can't negotiate, but you really have to know what it is that you're negotiating with as far as the licensing is concerned. So. Again, have a look at the uh, blog post, have a look at the SQL Server uh, 2019 licensing guide, know who to talk to, right, within your organization, ask if you have software assurance coverage, and know how to negotiate in order for you to get the full benefit benefits of, of um, software assurance. And also, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to add uh, more into the video, into the section in the future, should Microsoft, I'm laughing at the idea of them changing the licensing because they keep doing that. And uh, they want you to move to the cloud, hence why the new software assurance benefit. So I'm, I am going to update this section, maybe add a new portion to it in the future when Microsoft decides to uh, uh, change their licensing agreement again.